Now the wings are quite simple, they bolt on here, like there, and then there's these four. I'm going to show you this Land Rover driving, running out of fuel, and me making some ridiculous noises at the end of this video. This is an exciting one, folks. They just hang there. They're not terribly happy like, but I'll get some bolts in. Oh man, this thing is, it's amazing. It's been like two or three years since it's looked like that. Mrs. Laws would tell you I say this a lot, but I actually get this thing finished in this video. That is then subject to a test drive, of course. But goodness me, what a long road it's been. Stay tuned, folks. We'll get this together quite quickly. I've done everything I can now. I've got the bonnet on there. And uh, it fits fine up. Everything's at the limit of its adjustment, but it does go together now. Okay, so I've realised I've got to do these panels first, haven't I? The ones that go up under here. Well, there it is. Look, there's the panel. I've got these loosely in and that one there. And then there's these up here. But as you can see, the plate, the aluminium plate that holds to the wing itself is a bit crusty. All the bolt holes are missing. So I've come up with an idea. It's just some leftover. And that has just so happened to have the right spacing to go against this plate. So here's the ones I've cut. I've widened the hole to seven mil, that one and that one, and I've drilled that extra hole. And you can see now that the spacing is pretty good, matches the spacing on the top of there. So I'll show you on this. Now, oh, I've got to get rid of some of that swarf there. Look. But um, a burr, not swarf. Looking back up in here, you can see there we go, the spacing is going to work nicely with that plate. So I'm going to put this this plate on the back side of here, right around the back of here, so that the the damaged or the worn away part gets clamped between this new galvanised sheet and this galvanised roof brace. It pinches that whole thing and it's going to, hopefully with the galve as well, protect it from corrosion better and also have, give it a much better hold. All right, those are in now. This was the more complicated side, but... As you can see, it's all there, it's all butted in, as it should be. This end is the home straight, getting these little sill panels on. I straightened them out a little bit, but they were in reasonably good nick. There's a bit of filler in some of them, but as I said before, I'm not doing any bodywork on this car, I'm just putting it back together. Those went on pretty quickly. I'm now cleaning up the threads, or the door hinge, uh, or the door stops, I think, the thing which stops the door opening all the way. Pop those brand new painted hinges in with my new impact gun. Very satisfying work indeed. Get the impact out, that's the ticket. Right, I gotta get all this wiring through that little hole there. The front was pretty good actually, straight, quite straightforward compared to the back. I didn't really have to do much in the way of fixing it or messing around with it, it just went back together. Okay. The new lights and indicators just plugged into the loom. The wiring now comes out of the bulkhead here, it goes up the wing, new P-clip along. The wing there. These are the dip and main. That's the horn comes through, and then we've got again dip and main, the indicators, and then a line to the screen wash. This is really real bit of wiring I had to do, which was to reconnect the connectors for the H4 bulbs, the three three spade connectors for the bulbs. Look uh, to the original loom. I cut those off. It was all nasty and minging when I was taking it apart. I just chopped them off, knowing that I had plenty of these uh, heat shrink butt crimps in. So they all went together pretty easily actually, and as I said, the rest of it was more or less like plug and play with the indicators and side lights. These are brilliant, these these connectors, really satisfying to use. You just crimp them down, give them a good pull, a good test, and then you seal them up with a cigarette lighter. Uh, they melt, there's a glue that comes oozing out, so they're completely watertight, so although it's a mechanical connection, you uh, block it from the air, so no corrosion can take place. They're, they're brilliant, I've used them all over my scimitar, they've been very reliable for the last 10 or 15 years. Oh, it's satisfying getting this stuff together. All these bolted in reasonably quickly and easily. I think I use bolts on these rather than screws. Yes, and here they go. Indicating right, indicating left, side lights, dip beam, and main beam. Yeah, baby! Uh, on with the new wing mirrors, actually wing mirrors, because they're actually on a wing. <laughs> I got all brand new parts and convex, is it convex? Yeah, convex mirrors, so you've got a broader view. I'm on the bumper here and I'm thinking, what's better than this cracked up, horrible looking brushed on paint? It's actually just a galvanised finish and I've tried it here and you can see the original shapes of the galvanising. So I'm happy that that's going to look better than this. So I'm going to give it a once over. 
I couldn't quite believe this came up so nice, uh, this bumper. I know it still looks like a farm gate like, but it looked a lot better than the white that was painted over it. Really, I mean, it almost looks like a brand new part. You can see there's a bit of a mess on the top where the number plate mount bracket goes. But the new number plate mount bracket will go over it, so it'll cover it up. So I'm really happy with it. It looks nice and smart, I think, for a Land Rover. <laughs> Right folks, we're going to get the bumper on, the apron on, the grill on, and the number plate fixing plate bracket plate thing. Let's do it. Very uh, pleased to say that all this went together as it should, having welded those front chassis legs on. I was expecting some misalignment, but it all worked nicely. The apron went up nicely too, which was also against something new, which is the lower half of that uh, front panel. I was worried there might be some misalignment there too, but no dramas really. And the grill, which I'd already practiced, I'd already rehearsed this, if you like, before spraying the front panel. But yeah, the grill went on absolutely fine as well. So nice and easy, that lot. What was the last thing? The number plate bracket, there it is. Brand new, I think it's only mini in this one, it's quite light. Uh, so that bolts on and everything really looks quite new. It's done! Mrs. Laws came to help with the door. And then she bugged off again. <laughs> Baby. Yeah, baby. The doors were a pain in the ass. Oh my god. These bolts seem to shit themselves quite easily and ruin the threads. Luckily, I had like 10 where I needed four. Yeah. But it took me a long time. And when you push on them, the bracket inside the bulkhead flexes back so the bolt does not align properly. But it took me a lot longer than this video suggests. I got very annoyed, as you can see. This is the first time it's driven under its own steam. With new gearbox, new axles, new suspension, new brakes, new transfer box, and new engine, and new chassis. There it goes folks, stay tuned to the end of the video to see me kicking off about that door. Driven it down the slope and run out of fuel. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so I ran it out, I filled it up with fuel and I'm going to try and get it back in the garage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is finished. I can't believe it's coming to an end. If you've been the whole way through with me, <laughs> there can't be that many of you. I'd, I'd love it if you left a comment and told me about it, because there can't be that many who've seen this. I mean, we're on something 30, 40, I don't know. It's a lot of videos, anyway. Thank you very much for your support, everybody. Oh, my God, that was annoying! 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 Oh my God, that was annoying.